So I want to take today and talk about something that I think Diablo 4 is going to amazingly, amazingly succeed at, and that is as we enter into the end game. Now, I think that this is going to really, really be amazing for both Diablo 2 and Diablo 3 players. For the Diablo 2 players, the world tiers make it, I think, much more balanced and not the arcade style that you might have seen from Diablo 3. But then if you are a Diablo 3 player, the Nightmare Dungeon system is going to be inspired sort of by the Greater Rift system, albeit much more interesting in my opinion. Let's get into it. So I think the first thing to start with when we're talking about what we're going to be doing in Diablo 4 post leveling is the world tier system. I've seen a lot of people talk about Nightmare Dungeons and we're going to talk about that here as well as some of the open world stuff that is going to be in the end game. But honestly, none of that matters nearly as much, in my opinion, to the world tier system because the implications of how difficult things are going to be and get are really, really heavily, I guess you could say, implied in how the game actually scales. Now, right here, we have the world tier one and world tier two. Now, when you go ahead and look at the sort of scaling here, world tier one is obviously the base difficulty, but world two tier two is going to give you a little bit more challenging enemies and a little bit more experience and gold. We all have experienced in the beta world tier two. That is what I played on the entire time. But as we scale up, there's actually world tier three and world tier four that unlocks at level 50 and above. You're going to have to do specific dungeons in specific towns to unlock these modes and you're going to actually end up with new items as well as nightmare sigils hell tines and champion monsters and of course if we look at the actual details of what we're going to get in terms of advantages well we're going to get 100 percent more experience additional gold and they're actually going to overcome some resistances that we have now, sacred and unique items. Unique items have set stats that cannot have legendary affixes transplanted onto them. And then sacred items seem to be, again, sort of like ancients, I guess is a better way to put it, um, with higher stat rolls. Then we have tier four, and now we have ancestral items. And again, it's kind of that same idea with like primals, as far as I've seen in Diablo three, and then new unique items. Again, same thing with the base stats. This one's for level 70. And you can see here, this is the highest world tier difficulty. And you can see monsters give 200% increased experience, 15% more gold and overcome 40% resistance. Now it's important to note here, I actually want to compare this to Diablo threes greater if scaling because i think this is going to give a good idea on where kind of the difficulty and are we going to get this like massive arcade style where we're zipping across everywhere one shotting everything i don't think so so pulling up max Rose site and looking at the d3 great rift hp scaling basically it scales well quite a bit almost about 20 percent per tier that you're going up uh well i should say 17% from the previous tier is what you're going to be scaling. So this is a massive, massive HP boost. And this goes up to 150. And as you start to get to like plus 50 tiers, let's say you're starting at level one, Great Rift one, and then you go to 51. Well, you're getting 2,200% increased HP. Based on what we've seen in the Diablo four world tiers, this will not be the case. So we're not going to be doing trillions, billions of damage, it seems like, um, because arguably the world tiers are not going to scale nearly as hard. And I think of the world tiers sort of like the T16. For those of you that don't know, T16 is kind of like the open world in Diablo 3, the maximum difficulty where you're running bounties, etc. Now, that's going to be roughly about a thousand percent increased HP. And based on what we've seen, again, I can't really talk too much about the other difficulties, but there is no increase in terms of HP from the base difficulty to World Tier 2. And so I would surmise based on what we're seeing in terms of scaling, well, we're not going to really have a whole lot of trillions and billions of damage. And so these world tiers seemingly give us a glimpse into kind of how our builds are going to shape up and arguably for the better, because I think a lot of people, especially from D2, dislike the fact that in D3, all you do is load a bunch of movement speed and try to one shot your way through everything. And I think this is much more akin to something that they would enjoy. 
Now, here's where I think Diablo 4's endgame starts to become something that no other game really has done a great job. And the first thing is going to be the Whispers of the Dead or the Tree of Whispers. Basically, around the world, there's going to be these Whispers displayed on your map, and you're going to go to them get rewarded with experience, gold, and grim favors. Supposedly, these are going to be like the open world events that we experienced in beta, albeit kind of supercharged. And then you can exchange these grim favors for essentially loot and experience, which we saw in the end game beta footage. This is basically encouraging people to run around and do open world events. We will see if these loot and experience boxes essentially are going to be comparable to nightmare dungeons as far as we've seen it looks like it's going to be worth doing and as long as this is worth doing i think this makes it a lot more interesting uh, in terms of kind of sort of akin to the mmo style which i know that a lot of people may not enjoy that but i do think it lends itself to a much more interesting sort of end game rather than just running the same greater rift or same mephisto runs over and over and over again then, of course, we have the Nightmare Dungeons. These Nightmare Dungeons are basically regular dungeons with an added challenge. Some of the challenges could be something like double bosses. All enemies are invisible until you actually get into combat with them. Or like what we saw in that end game footage where you have the blood portals where you have to close them by killing all the monsters. These Nightmare Sigils can definitely, definitely um, up the difficulty levels and supposedly can go up infinitely which also determines sort of your rarity of your item drop so potentially it's an additional ancestral or sacreds now also the dungeon affixes that i mentioned earlier are based on these nightmare sigils as well so these will customize them even further depending on how many you use them now, on top of that, we already know what we're getting into when we're entering these dungeons, so we can plan around these things with the proper, I guess you could say, team comp or build based on the nightmare sigils that we are using. Now, I find this to be a lot more interesting than just running the same thing with a similar map layout and the exact same mechanics, meaning like, let's say I'm gonna do D2, right? What's well, the same thing over and over and over again? There really isn't a whole big difference, but you know, maybe there's different maps. Maybe you move a slightly different way. You can use a different build potentially, but I think that's a lot less interesting than actually changing some of the affixes again, potentially like double bosses. So now you kind of want to go in with a boss killing build uh, so that you can actually do that or potentially like the blood portals, right? So now you have to go in and maybe you want to run with a lot more AOE because you have to clear a lot more trash. Who knows how many other sigils are there? But I think these end up making it so that some of the more build variety is going to be necessary based on the sigils, and you're going to be min-maxing certain parts of your build for these specific affixes and sigils. I think this lends itself to a much, much, much more interesting playstyle because oftentimes when you're running in D3, for example, if I run, I don't know, let's say a Tal Rasha wizard build, I make a couple modifications if I want to speed farm for Paragon level or just to solo push. But as soon as I do that solo push, I run the exact same build over and over and over again. In fact, I cannot change it really at all in the piece, the, the combat. So it really doesn't, I guess you say, mix up your gameplay at all and i think this will and i think that's what meant, makes itself such an interesting sort of end game concept now of course if you're a casual player you may not even be doing any of this you may just run in do your dungeon same build over and over and over again but i think that arguably if you're going to talk about your casual players then the end game doesn't really matter a whole lot because people are just enjoying the game. That's kind of what a casual player does. I think the end game tends to be more appealing to your hardcore slash more dedicated audience. And so when you consider talking about the end game, I generally have that audience in mind. Now, I do think that despite this, I think a lot of people are going to be casual players, the vast majority in like in every game. And I think that Still, this is going to be a, an extremely fun thing to do, even if you're not mid-maxing it, just to constantly grind up sort of your levels in these Nightmare Sigils and Nightmare Dungeons. I'm pretty excited about this, and I think that this is going to be a lot more interesting than Diablo 2 and Diablo 3's current endgame. Speaking as someone who is a definitely hardcore player, um, who plays a lot more than your average person, uh, so this is pretty exciting to me, and I wanted to share it with you all, and I think that it's going to be a lot 
better and a lot more fun than Diablo 3 and Diablo 2. Because me personally, uh, I know some people disagree and they can run the same Mephisto run or run Great Rifts over and over and over again and not be bored at all. To me, um, I like the novelty of new seasons and I enjoy those games, um, although I haven't really played too much Diablo 2. Um, I really enjoy Diablo 3 for a short period of time before it kind of grows and gets stale based on the season. And hopefully with Diablo 4's Nightmare Dungeon, I still think that will happen because I do not disagree with anyone saying that these are repetitive. I still think they're going to be repetitive, but I think that'll be a little, a little bit more variety uh, when we get to that end game. And hopefully again with that season kind of mechanic in Diablo 4, it'll do that same thing that Diablo 3 does for me. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Are you interested in this system more so than Diablo 2, Diablo 3? What are you excited about most? And I'll see you all for the next video.